Trnava, Višegrad Cup. This is the World Cup event before the World Championship begins. It's Thursday morning, morning after a stormy night. We had a storm cell that passed over the camp at approximately 11 p.m. yesterday evening. Lots of wind, not all that much rain, but enough that it made a lot of problems. So by now it's 11 a.m. Most of the damage is repaired. And the camp still again looks more or less normal. Most of the F5J worlds is now gathered here and this Visegrad Cup will have almost 200 pilots flying. We'll have 11 groups with 18 pilots per group. That's 198. I think this is the largest competition I've ever been to and it's something special just because of that already. So it's Saturday. Approaching 2 p.m. and the uh, ready box for the fly-off has been called. I guess they are now testing if all the models have proper altimeters that prevent the motor to be restarted. And there are 14 pilots in the fly-off, although the corridor can accommodate 18. The weather is Kind of sunny, but very humid and hot. Very few cumulus clouds every here and there. And a very light breeze from the northeast, which is kind of in my back or down the runway. Forecast that I was watching forecasted more wind in the afternoon, but apparently that's not here yet. So the conditions will be similar as yesterday, where we had very little wind, which is unusual for this place. forecast is to be believed then from Monday on when the World Championship starts there will be a proper wind for Tarnava reaching 10 meters per second or so looks like we are sharing the runway with general aviation and this happens, uh, this stopped the competition a few times yesterday. So I don't know how this is uh, arranged uh, between the organizer and the uh, two aero clubs that have hangars and planes here. But apparently for the preliminary competition they are just <coughs> sharing the runway. Right now there's completely no wind where I'm standing. A couple of flags down in the camp are actually moving. And the direction which fla where flags are pointing to tells a lot about the movement of air there. And this gives you clues about where to start. 
before the first fly of round begins. And conditions will surely change a couple of times at least. So based on the current flag movements I would say that thermal is somewhere above me. Maybe a word or two about the field. As you can see, uh, wheat fields were already harvested and are now clean and empty. And there are still a couple of corn fields around, especially this one to the northeast and the other one, which is behind the red hunger. They are potentially dangerous and can cause lots of sweating when looking for a plane in that corn. So corn is now over two meters high and that's pretty annoying if you have to look for a plane in there. I've seen a couple of people do that today and yesterday and yesterday evening it was even my honor to walk up and down this field here so maybe what about my flying i have always enjoyed this field found it pretty easy to read uh, in august especially the turbulence are plentiful and with a bit of wind uh, at obvious places like at the edge of this tree line over there or a similar one here so you just fly to one of these tree lines if you have the wind up and down the runway and there should be a terminal somewhere for example now there's a bird marking the potential terminal just a few minutes before the start minutes to start and now there's a bird yeah I'm sure pilots will at least some of them will go for them for it so the other nice thing is that the corridor is so long uh, that not all of the planes can go to the same thermal usually so about half go to the left half go to the right and then it's up to specific weather situation winds direction uh, that make the pilots decide which way to go. So right now seems like they will go over the camp, the hangar, and the trees over there. And it's just a question of skill, whom of them will be the lowest and starting maybe a few meters between me and uh, parking space where the cars are so if I continue with my flying here uh, I was surprised to get my first flight uh, 1000 points but I attributed that not to my skill but to the majority of the pilots being still cautious about this new place where the competition is held and I continued in that manner with flights of 970 or so and at the end of the first day I ended up at place 16 which was not far from the fly-offs I was surprised so I decided to go for all of all or nothing and scored two zeros of course 
I couldn't contain my excitement to to oh Jesus this is a little low I couldn't contain my excitement to actually aim for the fly-off and push it to the max uh, tried for uh, for the best possible score and that's why I a collision immediately over their broken wing yeah yeah that's not how it's supposed to be guys so we'll immediately have a refly and let's see majority is where I predicted them to be someone went behind me I believe or above me I don't know and there are there's one two planes over the corn and they're both joining the crowd there over the camping and I hear buzzards calling which tells me there's some good air somewhere over the corn as well so they're having fun in the air this is a bit uncomfortable to watch planes is in such proximity low height over the people and property but let's hope there are no further collisions one of the guys who opted for the cornfield he tried to join the crowd to my right couldn't get the connection to the thermal and he decided to land so we have now two planes on the ground rest of them are happily climbing away and I guess just a matter of time how to spend the remaining 13 or so minutes because looks like they will all make it without much difficulty So with so few clouds it's gonna be soon really difficult to see the planes they're kinda hard to see on a blue background so I guess there's nothing left for me but check the landings a bit less than six minutes till the end 
and the uh, air is already full of screaming noises because pilots are trying to get their planes back down to the ground extremely strong thermals and clear blue sky that's a bit difficult you can't really allow your plane to climb to unlimited heights because you simply don't see them anymore It's about 4 minutes later now, 1 minute and 10 seconds till the end of the first round. Looks like no plane has been taken by the sky and no plane has disintegrated in the air. But uh, whistling noises are quite dramatic, are still going on. And planes are now assembling up the runway and the way wind is blowing right now this will be a bit of a downwind landing or at least decent amount of crosswind but it's not too strong so I'm sure all of them will be able to manage it safely Very nice. So if you want to see that from the other side, we also have some cameras placed on the other side, on the, the uh, organizer's container. And you can find the videos on a Facebook link below in the description. two minutes before of the start of the refly so what's happening now is that organizer changed the landing and starting direction because the wind has shifted and if you look at the flags and tapes they're all pointing towards the main hangar I guess the thermal now is over the camping area where the teams are placed flags there are pointing all over the place and this British slash Scottish flag is moving around and all the other flags are pointing to it so one minute to go I'm not sure if that thermal will still be there but let's see what pilots will do so this, since this is now a refly, they can risk as much as they want. Only the guy who called for a refly needs to have a result, so he needs to play it safe. Again, low and slow, but more spread around than before, so... This 
didn't expect that. I have three planes to my right, most of them are over the camp, and three of them are to my left actually, which is interesting. So it looks like the lowest one are here in the middle of the runway. Not sure if this is enough for anything, but they're trying. Must give them that. Now with the corn and the toilets, it's a background. You can judge how high this is. Ah, that was totally unnecessary. Come on, people. There's one guy. Okay, manual focus needed. One guy who is a bit higher and is climbing out happily. So in the meantime, what's happening over the camp? Planes have spread around. There are a few of them over those trees or even behind those trees and the air looks good there. And it looks even better there at the edge of the trees. Not sure if I can catch this properly. There above the clouds. Looks like a really crazy climb. Then some planes behind the trees there. And a few of the planes down the runway. One actually just to touch the ground. But the other ones also look to be climbing away happily. So there's one trick to this place since the runway is going down towards the Ternava town. If you just launch horizontally and fly all the way down the runway, you can gain some distance from the ground while staying at the same altitude as much as altimeter is concerned. So with the proper wind direction, that could be an interesting strategy to try and gain a better result. So again it looks like none of the planes still in the air will have any problems reaching 15 minutes. Even the two guys struggling over here, over the camp, are climbing slowly than the rest of them, but are climbing. There's now a crowd gathered there over the runway examining the remains of those two planes. So I'm sure these guys are professional pilots and have spare planes just to cover that kind of occurrences in the preliminary competition. Still, from my point of view, that crash was completely unnecessary. Now even the lowest two guys there got their good air and will 
disappear into the blue sky in a matter of a minute or two. So I guess it's again nothing for me to do but wait for them to come down and get their landings. Again, one minute and 15 seconds before the end of the refly. Air is again full of screaming noises. Because pilots need to get their planes down on the ground. Again, more of a crosswind. Planes are now assembling downwind. Okay, so one round out, out of three done and we have at least three damaged planes, more likely four. Exactly, some break and then we'll continue. We are now looking at the seconds before the start of the second fly-off and flex are again doing all kinds of interesting things especially this windsock here near me looks completely uninterested in moving at all while the flags over the camp are waving Let's see what the pilots will make out of this. So four went downwind to my right. There are two or three above me, but the majority is again over the camp. There are a few of them turning just around me and behind me. So I'm sure this is gonna be fun. I'll have to move around a bit more than usual. two. No, three. But the third one is still fighting. a fight for a few 
few of them. It's not yet safe to say they will make it. They are now behind the tree line where maybe a bit of rotors are forming. But as I said, they can simply try flying down the slope and gain some height above the ground this way. And I've seen people do this in the past. Of course, this almost requires you to run after your plane, so you can still see it. But I'm sure pe people are more than willing to do that. Uh, it looks like that guy now on the ground, almost. No, he didn't make it. Other one, in the meantime, got a few more meters out of that. It's now deciding to kind of follow the same route, not sure why. And there's one more interesting thing in the air here near me. Ah, uh, but he got something. Yeah. Sounds of joy from the corridor. Ah, so you de you decided to follow your plane. Okay. <laughs> so some people are apparently having fun. While some people are having fun, the other ones are at least few, one of them is still struggling. In my opinion, he's behind the thermal. He should come closer to us. Because the guy flying that plus over there, he was close to the trees already. And now he's up there. He now decided to come a big bit closer to us. And looks like he's immediately in a better air. So 
now even he will have no problems making this while some other people have to retrieve their planes from far down the field so I guess this is it for the second flight and let's move to the landings where I hope nothing bad happens Less than 2 minutes to go, 1 minute 40 seconds actually And most of the pilots are relaxed and getting ready to land Screaming noises from the sky are now muffled by the vans in my background running their engines and idle powering their air conditioning which is not really efficient overall but some people have to do that to survive around here 20 seconds remaining start third flight hope it's the last one really slow again really low I wonder if some of those people overflow the corridor at over 3 meters We decided on a safety height of 3 meters over the corridor and some of them looked lower Ok, 30 seconds have passed and that's what people have now in their height bank Now they have to multiply that and someone not making it there going to land immediately and a few more will follow, I'm sure but Look at that, in the middle of the field from a few meters up and climbing That looks quite amazing
A really wish that works out. It would be something beautiful to see. In the meantime, there is a GA plane that landed down the runway. It's now driving up here slowly. It will pass me and stir the air around here a lot. I'm sure the pilots will notice that. Maybe that's just what they need there. Or they will make it even without that plane stirring the air. Uh -huh, now I feel some wind in my back which is good news for those two lower guys. Yeah, and the tape there over the round group board. That's also showing good things. guys lost some height now Definitely not safe yet. So now the antennas on the hangar look inviting and we've seen people crash into them in the past years. So in this situation now you have to make a choice. Do you risk flying behind the trees and risking losing, uh, losing of your sight of the model? Or do you opt for the safer choice and stay in front of the trees trying to make the best of what's there? So I think that's Joe Woods flying the plus with the characteristical inverted V-tail. Not sure who's the other one. But they are now over the roof of that hangar. They have spread out a bit. Joe looks in the better air now. Front of the hangar looks pretty much dead. 
installing the plane there won't do any good. This really looks uncomfortable, but it's going up. So you really have to have nerve of steel to pull off something like that. Yeah, that's three that are close, maybe a bit more out. And again. I would have given up much earlier. I think he still has to cross. Oh, so he hit a pole there and landed on the roof of I don't know, a tent or a camper van, maybe. Yeah, that's how life is. In the meantime, that plus is at a safe height. hard to find him, but it's not that far ago that he was almost on the roof. Uh, there was some nice climb out. As you can see, the clouds are starting to pile up. Uh, there's some chance of storms in the evening again. We'll probably have to watch our tents again. incredibly humid day anyway, so it would be almost a miracle if there's no rain in the evening. So in the break I went to the scoreboard, check out the numbers and found out that for the fly-off you needed to lose at most 81 points from the six flights. So instead of twisting my back, let me tell you the math behind this. Eighty-one points in six flights means you need to you can afford to lose maximum of something like less than fourteen points per flight. So assuming 
all of your landings are perfect to the last second and to the bullseye you can afford to be maximum 4 or 5 meters above the lowest person in your group that's the kind of level of this competition has reached so this holds true for almost any competition with nice weather, low wind, uh, good thermal conditions but it looks like the Monday and the following days will have much more stronger wind still sunny, still good thermal conditions but because of the wind I hope we'll have higher differences in start height which will translate to a higher differences in score as well and I'm really curious what the minimum score will be to reach the flyoffs fly in the World Championship so in this kind of nice weather thermal conditions flying safe and going maybe 30 meters above the lowest one is not good enough anymore if you aim for the fly-off you have to be the lowest one in your group or within 5 meters of the lowest one as I said so there's no room anymore for playing it safe it's each flight highest possible risk and you have to make it five seconds to go no idea about the existing result or how anyone did so we'll have to wait for the final score to see that crashes which means this was the last flight now all we have to do is wait for the results these are the final results unofficial yet but look cool thank you You're very welcome, Yure. good afternoon ladies and gentlemen biggest FIJ contest in history is over. Now you have the last chance to say comment. I hope to complain. Is, is, it, is not. I ask to Mr. Re, chief of the jury, to confirm today and contest result. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, before I confirm the results, let me say thank you on behalf of the FAR jury, for all the organizers, all the comp comp contributors, excuse me, and all the yellow timekeepers, not just the yellow. And on behalf of the jury, we have checked the results, so I declare the results to be valid. I also wish you very good World Championship, fair contest, and it used to say, let win the best. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.
Uchiri Bo Uchiri, Mr. Ore from the Hungary. I like to add some the thank you, thank you for, thank you, especially Franciszek Bachraty, the general manager of this contest. But he only has star because he will be pointing you on the world champion. Uh, I like to thank you, IT, IT Central, with the head of the Yuri Schiller. I like to say thank you, technical team, who lead Karol Tupek and Franciszek Babacek. I like to say thank you for good job, the starters especially the Mirominářík and Radozávodský. Also, I thank you timekeepers and his chef Matúš Dudáš for their good job. One of the most senior organizers is Karol Fischer, who driving the Alfa Romeo <laughs> and uh, collected it all the paperwork and bring to the IT center. Also, very big thanks to people who arrange and manage for us the food, people from the kitchen and people from the restaurant. And very big thanks to Air Club uh, Trnava with his uh, chief, uh, Elo Mikula, because without uh, their patient, not be possible to organize uh, this kind of the contest. <laughs> the finally, I say thank you to Jiri. As I uh, mentioned before, the chief was Mr. Re from Hungary and Vladimir Gavrilko from the Ukraine and Juraj Bacsiak from Slovakia. <laughs> Honestly, they know they was not very busy because you flying with a good discipline and you demonstrated your professionality. And now we start to evaluate it. The result we will be evaluated category over six years, then juniors, and then complete the winners. I hope I have the good. On the third position in category over 60 years on the third position is Peter Hoffmann from Austria. On the second position in this category is Konrad Oetiker, Swiss. And the winner of this category come here from Scandinavia, Sweden, Lennart Arvidsson. I ask for the Swedish anthem.
Paparazzi Stein. Now we evaluated category junior. On the third position occupied Anna Schitz from Germany. Ivan Daško from Ukraine. Wow. And the winner of this category is Pail Avramov from the United States. Sweden. On the 12th position, Finnish Benedict Kriegel, Germany. On the 11th, Dominic Prastel, Germany. Position 10, Julian Benz. Germany. On the ninth, Roy Dor, Israel. On 
the position nine, Paolo Rota, Italy. Position eight, sorry, position seven, Andre Ziegler, Germany. Position six, Primož Rižner, Slovenia. Position five, Vlastimir Vostřel, Czech Republic. Position four, Oleg Golovidov, United States. Finish. Dus Kalerik, Swiss. position finish Joe Woods New Zealand <laughs> <laughs> and we have the winner of this year World Challenge Chernava Cup, Roberto Bonafade, Italy.
Ladies and gentlemen, one more again. Thank you very much. And I wish you a very good stay in Slovakia because many from you will be con will be continue on uh, World Champion, first World Champion in the category FIJ. To have a finish, have a good trip to home, and we see you next year. Bye.